If there was a type 1 civilization in the universe, what kind of planet do you think they would inhabit? Could we expect them to live close to their home star? And if their society advanced far enough, would we be able to see them? No one knows yet, but that hasn't stopped people from imagining what it would look like. Hey what's up? This is Christian with Type 1 Orbiter. This world of ours has so much potential, and little by little, humanity has laid the groundwork for future generations to continue the innovation. Everything from how we utilize resources, manage our time, and even imagine the future has changed so much in just the last 20 years. But in the grand scheme of things, our species lets the majority of our planet's wealth just go to waste. So let's see what we can do to fix that. Now the concept of a type 1 civilization is founded in the idea of not letting things go to waste, primarily regarding the energy that's available all around us. Think about it. Our world's current energy system is reliant on the burning of a finite amount of fossilized plants that we call fossil fuels. Despite that inconvenient fact, the majority of our species continues to invest heavily in this diminishing resource. Although this method of energy creation has treated us well in the recent past, it's not a viable option for the near future. And why would we want it to be anyways? Our planet already offers numerous alternative options, coming from the sun, wind, ocean, and even through splitting some atoms. The ability to utilize these various aspects of Earth are the metrics that are measured when identifying the progress of a civilization. A Type 1 is hypothesized to have complete control over all the energy systems on its home planet, along with significant influence over weather patterns, seismic activity, and the atmosphere. Many scientists believe that having a grasp on these natural systems of the planet are essential if we intend to continue technological innovation and prevent future extinction events. The extinction part is particularly important to keep in mind since our planet has a well-documented track record of filtering out species and replacing them with new ones. The commonality between these extinction events is likely the lack of control that previous Earthlings had over the forces of nature. Otherwise, an asteroid here or there may have seemed more manageable. Unfortunately, I can't speak to the specifics for how another civilization might build itself. But when it comes to humanity, we tend to accomplish complex tasks when we accurately share data with future generations and combine our efforts. A Type 1 civilization would likely be extremely interconnected so as to ensure that new ways of solving problems could be emulated and improved upon by others on the planet. By being so connected, it's likely this would lead to a rapid increase in the amount of new ideas and a quicker filtration of unbeneficial beliefs. Sometimes it's difficult to say what an unbeneficial belief is. It's subjective, right? But by comparing the outcomes of a belief on a global scale, one could imagine a society that doesn't get stuck in its ways merely because of inherited culture, but instead prioritizes what works best for the current day. Examples of this happening can already be seen. After all, People eventually figured out you can navigate oceans much faster if you consider that it's a sphere instead of flat, or that washing your hands is a much better defense against plagues than a sacrifice at the altar. Just a couple things we take for granted. Preservation of tradition is likely one of the most prominent barriers for humanity when it comes to making the necessary steps toward a Type 1 status. It's a common pattern across our species to desire the nostalgia the past once brought us. And you know, that's okay. But when it controls us, it becomes much harder to imagine the future. This is not to say that tradition is innately unbeneficial, but tradition for tradition's sake incentivizes stagnation. Human nature aside, fossil records indicate that around 99% of all life that's ever existed on Earth has already gone extinct, which might mean humanity's chances of ascending to a Type 1 are quite low, especially if you consider the harmful changes in our climate that are being artificially created from how we power our current civilization. The silver lining here is that at least we have a vague understanding that our time on Earth is limited. 
so maybe we can prepare for that. After all, ignoring the inevitable doesn't sound quite as fun as trying to find a way around it. This endeavor is worth working toward too, because our capacity to store and deploy energy is the primary determinant for how much freedom humans get to enjoy. The summarized reason for this is based in the history of humanity, where our free time was originally dependent on how many calories we could obtain, then how much we could multiply our strength with tools, and somewhere down the line, our freedom became dependent on how efficiently we could burn something. Internal combustion revolutionized the world, but the majority of energy created like that is actually lost. So if we could develop a system where energy was more abundant and cheaper, this would facilitate three very important solutions that would change the world. First being that if a developing country had access to surplus energy, they could begin modernizing their economy and close the digital divide. Many countries depend on a robust energy sector to take on huge infrastructure projects and become self-sufficient. Second would be diversifying the roles of women in society, creating new types of jobs aside from the traditional childbearing and patriarch model. Women make up 50% of the world, but do the majority of all the work, because in many countries, taking care of kids and performing simple tasks like maintaining the home take much longer without abundant energy. This decreases the potential for other types of contributions, which women are more than capable of doing. Third, and possibly most important, would be climate change mitigation. Because after all, environmental degradation is a lot like a leaky pipe. It doesn't matter how much spillage you clean up until the source of the leak is closed up. This is likely the biggest issue of our time and the leading contribution to this spill, which is our inefficient energy system. Currently, some scientists estimate that we are a 0.7 on the Kardashev scale, and about 100 years from becoming a type one civilization. And for further context, there are actually five different classifications. So if you'd like to hear my thoughts on the development of other civilizations, let me know down in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content about technology and the advancement of humanity. It really helps the algorithm, which is kind of like its own civilization in itself. That aside, there are countless signs that humans are making rapid strides toward a type 1 status, observed through the way people utilize the internet to connect, learn, and trade. Along with the growing use of renewable technologies, research for things like fusion energy and battery storage advancements, even the more obscure aspects of life like clothing fashion and superhero movies have become shared subjects of interest across cultures in the world. Possibly most interesting of all is the consolidation of language like English and Mandarin Chinese, which have become the most widely spoken languages, likely increasing the cohesion between different types of people. So if you made it this far into the video, let me ask, do you think we could become a type one civilization? And if not, let me know why, I'd love to know what you think. So before I finish up, I just wanted to say there is a whole lot of other stuff I could have touched on for this video, but my goal was to identify the elephant in the room. Going forward, humanity has a choice of actively avoiding extinction or passively hoping it doesn't happen. But with understanding and a unified goal in mind, we might accidentally make our lives better. So thanks for watching Type 1 Orbiter. I look forward to seeing you again. I'll be uploading a lot more content in the very near future, so keep an eye out.